In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a Mars mod on this ICOM 746 Pro. Coming up right now. Hey everybody, Rudy here from Take a Bath Productions with another video to help make your life just a little bit easier. Today I'm going to be working on this ICOM IC746 Pro. We're going to open up the transmit, and towards the end of the video I'm going to go through the frequencies and see where it was actually affected, that way you know. And I'm also going to check the power levels to see if those were affected too. Okay, let's dive right in. Okay, as you can see, we're working here at the bottom of the radio. I've got the bottom cover off, obviously, and uh, got to pull this DSP unit off. This is the front, obviously, as you can see, and I, I did put an arrow on here just to make sure that I get that back in the same way. So this comes off real easy. Just grab it like that and boom, right off of there. All right. Now the uh, components you need are right in this area, but uh, actually right in this area. Let me zoom in and uh, give you a close-up of what that looks like. All right, guys, welcome back. As you can see, I'm zoomed in here. Um, see how this chip is oriented? Uh, so your, your components that you're gonna need are right here and right here. I've marked them with a black marker. Um, you can kind of tell the group they're in. This group has two and this group has three. Um, I don't remember what the uh, designation is on these, you know, W1608 or something, I think. I'll look it up and I'll post a uh, text letter in the video of what these actually are called, but it doesn't really matter because there's no marker on the board anyway, but just for your own reference, I'll find out and, and then put a text on the board, on the, uh, excuse me, on the video of what these are actually called. Um, I use an X-Acto knife and a regular soldering iron. Um, you can use uh, a nice hot air rework station if you have one. Uh, that would be the best way to go, but I don't have anything fancy like that, and most of the people that are watching this don't either, so I'm just using ordinary tools that ordinary people have. So, best bet is to kind of get the X-Acto knife under there so you can get a little pressure started and just kind of heat up one side, work to the other, there it goes, it popped off. Just be careful with it. And, let's see, I'm going to set him aside just for a minute. And kind of go back and just touch up the trace a little bit right there. And do the same thing to the other side. Be real careful when you're doing this not to touch any of the plastic parts this one's being a little more stubborn like this you know plug for example with the soldering iron and you're gonna burn it all up and then you're gonna have trouble getting the DSP back on make sure there's no wires in your way That one was a pain in the neck, but it came off. Now before I put that DSP back on, I'm going to take a magnifying glass, a good one, and look at those traces and make sure there's nothing bridged or shorted or anything like that. Alright, I'm going to put the uh, DSP back and we'll uh, test the radio. Okay, I kind of got everything cleaned up. Um, all I did was took a Q-tip and some spray uh, electri electrical cleaner and cleaned up the uh, terminals. You probably don't have to do that, it's just my OCD acting up on that one. Um, let me zoom out and we'll put the DSP back and flip this puppy over and see what, it, see what she does. Alright, welcome back. And I just noticed that these two plugs are actually a different size, so you couldn't get this unit on here backwards if you wanted to. So. I was just marking it just in case. I couldn't see that before I pulled it off. 
Just carefully line the pins up so that you don't bend any of them and push her down. Yeah, one quick note I wanted to say. I, I took the two components that I removed and put them under a piece of tape and stuck them to the DSP unit just in case anybody ever wants to undo the mod in the future. Uh, that's just a little bit of a tip right there. Just in case. Okay, thanks. Alright guys, as you can see, I got it back together and running. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and show all the uh, individual frequencies. It's just a waste of time. But I did kind of make a little plot just to uh, make sure that it's still working. Um, I checked the, uh, the normal HF bands where it's supposed to transmit and everything was fine. I haven't lost any power there. Um, I've, I've heard sometimes when you do this mod on certain radios, you can lose a little bit of power even where it's supposed to transmit, but that didn't happen on this one. Um, what I found was, is I was getting about 100 watts out between uh, 1.6 and 59.999 uh, megahertz. It, it worked pretty good on HF. Uh, the VHF part didn't work quite as good. Um, I was actually getting a little bit of power out at 130 but not much. Uh, the radio was really folding back. I think the uh, the tuning coils and stuff on the inside weren't uh, weren't happy at that frequency. But it was transmitting. Um, I found the sweet range was around 140 to 150. I was getting out full power, uh, but then after 150, it dropped off pretty quick. But it would actually transmit all the way up to 174. So really it transmits between 130 and 174, but I would recommend if you're going to transmit outside of 140 to 150 to leave the power set pretty low. Okay, well guys, I hope this has been helpful. And if you like this video, click on the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. Thanks for watching.